Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight we're Thank going to you, ride Marvin Miller and back evening. through time and memory to another year. Well, tonight America we're going to ride to yesterday. Tonight's destination memory to another year. years from 1900 to 1905. Nineteen hundred, the year of the rocking chair, the bicycle, the cakewalk. William McKinley was president of the United States, and Teddy Roosevelt was vice president. And elaborate preparations were underway for the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo. George M. Cohan and the four Cohans were up in lights on Broadway, and young George, who had been born on the 4th of July, wrote a song and told everyone on Broadway about it. I'm a kid that's all the candy I'm a Yankee doodle -doo dandy I'm glad I am a Southern fan I'm a real live Yankee doodle Made my name and fame and boodle Just like Mr. Doodle did by riding on a pony Can you I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, a Yankee Doodle Do or Die, a real life nephew of my Uncle Sam, cause I was born on the 4th of July, I've got a Yankee Doodle sweetheart, she's my Yankee Doodle joy, the Yankee Doodle came to London just to ride Ponies, I am a Yankee Doodle boy. I'm a Yankee Doodle Sandy, a Yankee Doodle do or die. A real life nephew of my uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. I've got a Yankee Doodle sweetheart, and she's my Yankee Doodle joy. Now Yankee Doodle came to London just to ride the pony. I am a Yankee Doodle boy. The early 1900s. Tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? with the darlings of Broadway. Yes, and Enrico Caruso is the king of the Metropolitan Opera. Oh, my love, saying something like this. Now, Father, you must speak to your son. He's developing into a regular time squanderer. He spent the whole day shut up in the dark looking at that, that new thing they call moving pictures. Yes, 
the Rover Boys were starting out on their first great adventure, and motion pictures were just beginning. And if you had a piano in your parlor back in those days, it was one song that was certain to be on it. In the good old facing a crowd that is surging through the doors of a building at the Pan-American Exposition. People are all anxious to shake the hand of a man standing a few feet away from you, the President of the United States. Are you tired? Not at all. You can't shake hands with everyone at the exposition, you know. Uh, perhaps not, but at least everyone will know that I tried to shake hands with him. Uh, here comes the line again. Mr. President... I can't tell you how proud I am to shake your hand. Thank you. I'm just as proud to shake yours, madam. Thank you. Well, I must say he's perfectly lovely. Well, son, I see that your hand is bandaged. Are you injured in some way? Yes. Yes, I'm injured. Oh. Hold that man. Don't let him get away. Charles, Clark, help me with the president. Call a doctor. Someone call a doctor. Don't. I'm glad to hurt him. He didn't know. He didn't know. The man was President William McKinley. A man of gentleness and kindness. The entire world mourned his death on September 14th, eight days later. Oh, pleasant things to remember from the early 1900s. The World Series came into being, and horse racing was beginning to interest the nation. A great operetta was playing at the Broadway Theater in New York, The Prince of Tilson, and a stirring song from that score will be remembered by everyone who saw it. <laughs> Where did 
and rich is all worldly wealth is a heart that's always jolly beaming with happiness hope and health by love divine but sweeter than kisses we win by stealth are the hours we give to folly so come let us clink but first let us drink one toast with a brimming sign here's to the land which gave me birth here's to the flag she flies here's to her son the best of earth here's to her smiling skies here's to a heart which for me, true as the stars above, here's to the day when mine shall be, here's to the girl. the days of steamer excursions, of picnic parties riding through Central Park on tandem bicycles, of barbershop quartets, and the police gazette. And those were the days when the vice president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, was inaugurated president following the death of William McKinley and charged about Washington like a dynamo, making things hum. The act has passed, Mr. President, just the way you wanted it. Congress has appropriated $40 million to purchase the property and rights from the French company. You can build your canal across the Isthmus of Panama. Yes, after a long fight, Teddy Roosevelt saw the way clear for the accomplishment of one of the dreams of his lifetime. 
coast of Panama Canal. In 1901, a brilliant young composer named Ethelbert Nevin wrote a melody to the words of a poem by Frank Stanton. The result, one of the world's most beloved lullabies. Sweetest little child, everybody A new star named Faye Templeton sang a lilting song into the top hit class. with the beautiful Kashmiri song, and ladies started painting the verses of the Rubaiyat by Omar Khayyam on cloth. On the more serious side, people were talking about President Roosevelt's great dream of the Panama Canal, and Lieutenant Robert Perry's trip to the Arctic. And at home, 
everyone started singing a song by Eddie Leonard and never really stopped. <laughs> era, Mrs. Terry Nations and Ella Hugh Root. The largest tree in the world was discovered in the California Sierras, and the famous St. Louis Exposition opened. <laughs> seems a long time ago, doesn't it, folks? Or it's 50 years back into time and memory. Time brings many changes. Styles have changed. Tastes have changed. Even the way people speak has been changed since those days when George M. Cohan first looked across the footlights and sang about his country. But the spirit he sang about has never changed. It's the spirit that flames brightest in times of challenge. And perhaps glows brighter today than ever before. So on this eve of our Independence Day holiday, we find that same spirit still aflame in the warm words and stirring music of Mr. Irving Berlin. Come on. 
for joining us. In just a moment, I'll tell you what we have in store for you next week. The Summer Show Train is written by Dean Holloway and brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's excursion on the Summer Show Train and that you're having a happy weekend over this fourth. Yes, have a good time, folks. But for a moment, perhaps as you hear a band or see a skyrocket, Remember that it is the 4th of July, the birthday of peace. Freedom and liberty are more than words on the backs of coins. They stand for freedom to write and speak and assemble. Freedom to vote more than one way. Freedom to live with dignity. Remember tomorrow, that men died to give us these freedoms. Keeping them is everybody's job. Part of that job Simple, good citizenship, keeping informed, voting, serving on juries and school boards, helping our own community. Yes, freedom is everybody's job. <laughs> In 1934, Love and Bloom was the country's number one song. And next week, the summer show train is going to take you back to that year to relive some of its interesting happenings and hear many of its greatest songs. Songs like You and the Night and the Music, Anything Goes, and One Night of Love. So join us again next Monday, folks, and ride with us aboard the summer show train back to the year 1934. <laughs> Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. Gordon McRae is currently starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor Western, The Return of the Frontiersman. The voice of President McKinley on tonight's program was an impersonation, and the voice of Enrico Caruso was a recording. And now for Lucille Norman, Carmen Dragon, and the orchestra, the Norman Luboff Choir, and our star, Gordon McRae. This is Marvin Miller with a hearty invitation from the American Railroad to join us again next week ride the summer show train back to the year 1934. And now stay tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh.